Hey kiddos, this is Mr. B, and this next uh, work that we're going to talk about is, as soon as I can find it, there we go, there's our hover cam, and this image of me is kind of silly, I think. Let's see what we can do to it. I can make it. There we go, there's that. Ah, that's a little better. I was looking kind of silly there. All right, so we took it over here in the corner and get it done. So this is the lecture related to the other work product that you will have this week. This week you will have two pieces of work product. One is performance-based. That is the song that you will make, the etude that you will build using minor seconds uh, and constructing a do-it-yourself hack Mandalorian theme. All right, so that's one part. This is the other part of this week's work. This time you'll be doing ultimately a drawing to show me that you understand what was presented in this lecture. So this trimester is about intervals. An interval is the distance between two notes. Now, two notes played uh, can be played together or progressively. You play them at the same time or one after the other. But generally, intervals are thought of in an ascending manner, meaning we go from low note to high note, all right? Um, and, and it's at a distance that's defined as or within the context of the name of the interval. So it could be easier, but things have evolved in a, in a nonlinear way. Things have evolved in a very human way. Um, but to try and relate it to something you may know, the, the coordinate plane in mathematics, right? This position here would be considered our origin or zero, zero. Well, think about that as C4, or like middle C. And we have 12 steps that we take to get all the way to C5, right? So there's the steps that we're taking, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But our origin here is where we're starting at C, right? So we've, we've got this octave idea that's there coming back to the same note. We're going to figure out where exactly that idea comes from. But keep in mind that this C is right here at the origin, not at this first position, okay? So we can look at this in the context of a math relationship. Uh, in math, we have terms uh, for averages and generally talking about them being mean, median, and mode. Now, a mean is the most commonly used term. Uh, it's the sum of all the numbers, and you divide by the number of numbers or values, right? Uh, median is the middle number. So you arrange all the numbers from smallest to largest, uh, and then the middle number is that median. Now, if it turns out that there's an even number of numbers, uh, you actually take the average between the two middle numbers, which so a median might have a mean in it. <laughs> and then mode, which is sort of related to what we're talking about in music. I'll show you how. It's the most frequent number or value that comes up in a set, in a data set. So, for example, if we played particular notes of A, B, C, C sharp, A, B flat, D, A, you can see that A has come up here three times. That would be the mode of that particular data set of those values per se, okay? So now in piano, we talk about modes, and so we're gonna show you how um, that concept is related, but we, we need some background information in order to, to get there. And that means first, let's look at the piano. And when we look at the piano keyboard, even within our garage band, we see this relationship of white keys and black keys. Okay, and the, the total piano, as we know, has usually 88 keys that we really want. But if we want to look at it another way, another reality is we could take and stretch all of that out. And so now we're going from C to C5, and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 positions. We're back to that, quote, octave idea. Where, again, does this octave thing comes from? And, well, this is related to this mode concept, right? So... If we go ahead and we look at the notes this way, and if I only look at the white keys, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and back again, this is where we get our eight. This is where octave comes from, eight. 
eight is the repetition of the first note. Again, we're usually speaking here in an ascending way, going up. Things work the other way, too, and we'll explain that in just a little bit. But everything is based on the C with no black keys. Now, this pattern is the foundation of all Western music. Yeah, believe it or not. This is, in fact, what's called the C major scale. Now, back in the day, it was called the Ionian mode when they were still developing a lot of these concepts and kind of trying to figure out where all the patterns were in the mix. We eventually get to, we've taken, out of all the modes they played with, they reduced it down to six, and then we've reduced it down to even sort of two nowadays, and we're going to get to Y. But again, if we lay out these notes on sort of like a coordinate plane idea to where this origin would be zero, as I take steps over from things, uh, one step is actually two positions, and in between is what's called a half step. So if I move from C to C sharp, it's called a half step. If I move from C to D, that's what's called a whole step. And this pattern is that. It is, we're not going to play all 12 notes that are available to us, or 13 if you think about it. We're not going to play all of them. We're going to play these two end notes for sure, and that's why it's that particular mode. So this is C. It's C major. C is dominant within it because C gets played twice, right? That's kind of the idea. So what the pattern is, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So when you play with that on the keyboard, this is what these cats came up with. They started with the C, which gave us whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Then they did another pattern based on starting on D, just shifting the keyboard over. And so we continue on with these patterns. These are what are called the modes. Now, over the years, uh, we kind of get tired of them, but we also kind of figure out that there's a lot of repetition going on. And we end up with major and minor being kind of the distillation of all of it over the years. And looking at it on... Uh, the piano keyboard is one way of seeing things, but here's another way of seeing it. If you draw out a circle, just like a clock, and you break out your fours and then twos like this, uh, you've got your 12 positions. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, E sharp, and B. And if we follow our same pattern of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, that is a major scale. A minor scale is a similar and related idea. Now notice I still have C at the top, but I'm going to start from the A. A minor scale is whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. So a major pattern is whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, and a minor pattern is Whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. So really what it's about is we have this chromatic scale. We have this idea of a chromatic scale. And this is ultimately what you are going to turn in this week in terms of art. You're going to draw this picture. And you are going to state that it is a model of the chromatic scale starting on C. All 12 tones are played, ending on the C, one octave above that starting tone in an ascending form. So that's ultimately what you're going to turn in in terms of that work. But here's how the intervals are then related, because all the intervals are named, and you're going to see another document uh, later on. Um, hold on, I'll show you that. You can see here we go. Da, 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 da. You'll have a, uh, a smaller version of that to look at. But the names of all the intervals use minor and major because of this history. So without knowing a little bit about the history, the names don't really mean as much. And this week, we are beginning with the minor second. And this is a drawing you will do at another time. But I want you to see that the distance between C and C sharp is a minor second. The distance between C sharp and D is a minor second. 
So any two notes that are side by side, that is a minor second. If you have to skip a note to get to a note, that interval is a major second. Okay? As we keep going around in an ascending order, you can see that you know these sort of have a relationship. They're sort of two halves of the same coin. And you will learn more as we study that, yes, there is sort of this magical relationship between a fourth and a fifth. And this middle line uh, is really a diameter, and it starts to play with why, on some level, uh, things are considered um, uh, tritone assemblies uh, when, we, when we build octaves, because it's eight and it's four and four is kind of part of the idea. So that is... The ex oh, one last thing. How does this relate to math still? Well, you may have seen these terms before in mathematics. Your diameter would sort of be our tritone. Each of those um, intervals that we talk about are the basis of chords in music. Usually we use three-note chords and they get more complicated, but the simplest chord really is a two-note chord, and that's kind of some of the relationships. Certainly, arcs, you may remember secants, tangents, and of course a radius, but what is interesting there to us more than anything else is that we have um, this parallel relationship with the idea of a chord, and I think that's kind of cool. Again, this is the work that you have to do, so you're going to draw this with your iPad. That's the drawing you're going to do, and then somewhere in the context of that drawing, you should have a little note that says something like this, that this is a model of the chromatic scale starting on C, all 12 tones are played, ending on the C, one octave above the starting tone in an ascending form. And thank you very much.